bottom like that. Right. Now you're ready to mount it onto the stator. Turn yesterday's stator upside down. It's good and hard now. And we're going to bolt this top bracket on. We put these nuts on loose because we're going to locate the bracket in the right place before we tighten them. The threads are a bit tight because a bit of the concrete got in there, but if all else fails, a bit of wire brushing will get that out. Now, you notice that this is very loose. You can move this around about half an inch. So we're going to center this over the center hole. And if you use metric or you use inch, it's not a big deal. If you're using inch, it should be three and a half inches about in all directions. Now we tighten it down. And we tighten this down real well because it's going to be here for the next 25 years. There's no reason anyone would ever have to take this off. In most villages, you'll have a couple concrete blocks, so they'll get a couple big pieces of wood to do this. And you set it with the tube facing straight down. And the next thing you do is find yesterday's rotor and drop it in. It's now dried a bit. You can see the rough edge or the rough surface. You drop it in. until it goes all the way in and now it's perfectly centered. You've got six studs sticking up. Find the ones that go straight down to the other side that hold the bracket on. They're the strongest ones. They're going to hold it all together and put a nut and a washer down on both of them as far as that nut and washer will easily go. Now you find your bottom bracket. It's going to go on like this, but just like the top bracket, we have to get some grease in it first. Because as I said before, this is the only grease this machine is going to get for the next 25 years. And slide this with the long end down like that. You'll need two pieces of local wood to be bolted on the bottom and they will be used as carrying handles. Now it's time to put the turning handle on. The whole unit is getting a little heavier at this point, so you may want to get someone to help you lift it. The top bearing that also has to last 25 years is just made up of four flat washers. We simply throw a bit of grease on each one and then we spin the handle. On. Just spin it so it's maybe halfway down the threads. And now we're going to turn the whole machine upright. This is the locking nut. When you're shelling peanuts or any other kind of agricultural product, the, the height that this rotor rides inside the machine determines the space in the bottom and the size of the product that you can shell. So if you want to do a fine adjust to make this go up and down slightly, you do it simply by turning the handle up and down on the thread. If you want to do a coarse adjust, you do it by loosening these two nuts and raising this entire tube up and down on the shaft. So if you're going to be going all of a sudden for palm nuts in West Africa, you're going to want to lower this way down. But if you're going to be going for small peanuts from almost desert land in North Africa, you're going to want to raise this all the way up. All right, now we're going to put the locking nut on. 
and we're going to set it for the size of peanuts that we have. The way to set up your machine for your size of crop is you shell one of these peanuts by hand and you drop the peanut down past the rotor. If it falls all the way through right away, your rotor is too low. It fell through the whole way. So now we raise the rotor up a little bit. We lock it. You raise the rotor up until a peanut kernel drops through with the rotor standing still. Then you do your fine adjustment to get the kind of shelling that you want, whether you're doing peanut butter or peanut seeds. The last thing is to put in the metering plates. If we would put peanuts in this right now without any metering plates, they'd fall down in between the rotor and stator in such a great quantity that the rotor would jam up and there'd be no way you could turn it. So we have to make sure that the peanuts dribble down through this small gap in this metering plate in such a way that they don't jam up the rotor. So we're just going to assemble this on top as before. Then we're going to add another little plate which slides over the top or opens up this gap and that allows us to, exact, to adjust exactly how fast the peanuts come in. So you can see that if you had it like this, the peanuts would have this whole area to come through. But if we slid the plate over here and then bolted it down, you'd only have half the peanut flow. So this is how we adjust how fast the peanuts come through. We adjust for the size of peanuts by raising or lowering the rotor. We adjust for the number of peanuts by sliding this thing back and forth. There will always be some broken nuts. There's no way to adjust so that all of them come out perfectly. What you have to do is simply adjust the vertical to get the best quality you can. Now we put the sliding plate in. It just pops over one of these other screws. We're going to start it by having the hole half closed. So there's room for two fingers. Drop a washer. And we close this with a wing nut. You get one wing nut in each kit. And the wing nut is there so that in the future, without any tools, the people in the village can adjust this open and closed depending on the peanut flow. Doesn't matter which direction you turn. It would normally have taken someone about 15 minutes to shell all those peanuts in my hand, and we did it in approximately 10 seconds. They're all shelled. And it's hard to tell right now, but when you winnow them, you'll look for broken peanuts. Um, if you find them all split in half like this and you want to have them whole with the skin on, you roll the you lower the, uh, the, the rotor a little bit. If most of them are coming out like this, which is to say with the skin on and you want to have them broken in half because you're making peanut butter, you raise it up. I'm sure that you can fiddle around with it and figure out exactly how you like the peanuts to come out. If some of them come unshelled and some of them are broken, then somehow your rotor is not in the center of the stator. The surefire way of having uneven peanuts in your batch You've got uneven peanuts in terms of some of them broken and some of them unshelled. Check back through your steps and make sure your rotor is exactly in the center of the machine and tighten it down well. And good luck. I hope I've explained this well enough. If you have any questions or things you've missed, you can go to www.fullbellyproject.org and there's a series of photographs and explanations to fill in the gaps. There's also contact information and you can contact me personally. I'll get back to you right away if you have any questions on any special problems or any great ideas how to make this machine better or other machines that we can make from concrete. So again, I wish you good luck and happy shelling.